Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer is the most watched trailer of all time in its first 24 hours. A record breaking 365 million views across platforms, and I am so grateful to all of you for watching New Rockstars reaction and our breakdown videos, both of which trended. Yay! Our breakdown hit the top five of all content on YouTube on Tuesday, so that only the Deadpool trailer and like the Duncan's ad and Usher's halftime show were above us. I can't believe it. I love you guys. At this point, everybody has heard of Hoyo vs. Space Fantasy RPG Honkai Star Rail. It won Best Mobile Game at the Game Awards, Best Game for Google Play, and Best Game for the App Store in 2023. Whether you're already a Honkai Star Rail fan, or someone who's always been curious but didn't know where to begin, Honkai's massive 2.0 update is huge news. The new update introduces a new world, Panacone, the planet of festivities, that has a ton of new maps, new characters, and new things to explore. Remember Canto Bite from The Last Jedi? Panacone is like that. On the surface, it's a luxurious vacation getaway, but the realm of dreams butts up right against it, shrouding the entire city in a layer of surreal mystery. In 2.0, introduces two new awesome characters to uncover them with. First up, is Black Swan, a mysterious and elegant woman who uses a crystal ball and cards to see the future. In battle, she's a wind-type, nihility character with crazy damage over time abilities. Then there's Sparkle, who's mischievous, impish, and completely unpredictable. In battle, she's a quantum-type harmony character who can restore skill points for her allies. If you log into Honkai Star Rail for seven consecutive days, you'll receive 20 Star Rail special passes for free that you can use to draw Black Swan and Sparkle. And if you download Honkai Star Rail using the link in the description, you can plug in our redemption code and get 50 stellar jades. But hold up. Despite that high high, I felt that breakdown that was over 30 minutes of hyper-focused insanity really should have been over 40 minutes because I still, still missed things. I'm so mad at myself. Look at me running victory laps for finding the Secret Wars comic, the Pinko Doce bottle, the Emmy acceptance speech, the Roy Lichtenstein art, the nods to Temple of Doom. Because it doesn't matter. I still fail to see 20 additional details. So to complete my glorious purpose, here is part D of my breakdown, my true maximum effort. And the best way to support this insanity here on New Rockstars is with a Deadpool Multiverse Eras Tour shirt, which you can get over at nerdriot.shop. Okay, I wanna start with Wade's Hawaiian shirt. I mentioned how in Deadpool 2, he wore the same black and purple Hawaiian shirt that Chunk wears in the Goonies. That is not the same shirt he's wearing here. In both the 2016 and 2018 Deadpool movies, Wade typically wears Hawaiian shirts, but this one is actually the R.E. Dunn Tiger Surf Rider shirt, and it, folks, it ain't cheap. The reason I'm mentioning it is the tiger of it all. Go get him, tiger, is MJ's catchphrase for Peter Parker. Go get him, tiger. And Weasel says this phrase to Wade in the strip club in the 2016 movie where Stan Lee is a DJ. Go get her, tiger. And Deadpool says it to Negasonic Teenage Warhead when she fights Angel Dust. Go get her, tiger. Hey! Hey, that's the woman who's suing Star Wars now. That's fun. Okay, next new detail. When the TVA detains Wade, I pointed out how it is weird that they even bother knocking on his door as a courtesy because they're the TVA, they can show up anywhere. But notice how a time door opens behind Wade and he is grabbed from behind, but the main Minuteman grabs his hairpiece and pulls it forward as if he's trying to keep Wade from being pulled back. Why does he do this? Could it be that there's like two factions of the TVA warring against each other? Maybe, but I really just think that there's something about this hairpiece that this Minuteman doesn't like. Maybe he's worried it could be weaponized, or maybe Wade has a joke about not being bald like so many other Marvel figures are. Thanos, Kingpin, Professor X, and this movie's villain, Cassandra Nova. And this Minuteman is like, that shit ain't real. Okay, next when Wade meets Paradox, Paradox says, Walk with me. I swear, I don't mean to overanalyze the snap, but the gesture is pretty important to the MCU. It's from Thanos' big snap, to Hulk's big snap, to Tony Stark's big snap, and to the sexy snaps that Agatha Harkness did throughout WandaVision. But in this case, the exact sound of Matthew McFadden's snap, the way it echoes in this room, sounds almost exactly like the Disney Plus fanfare. Walk with me. I don't know what to make of this, but the MCU has established that all of its reality exists on Disney Plus and it's controlled by the Kevin robot because these are titles that She-Hulk physically swung from thumbnail to thumbnail of on the Disney Plus homepage. And I always thought it was interesting how she swung from Loki into the Assemble documentary. Like Loki in the TVA is the important medium through which all meta things in the MCU have to cross through. And it's just important to remember that that robot and She-Hulk see the MCU through the same meta media lens that Deadpool and Paradox will in this movie. Movie. Okay, 
Next, the TVA corridor with the sacred timeline wall and hourglass. This isn't really a new detail, but I just wanted to clear it up for you guys. This technician, the white lab coat, is not Victor Timely. People, I guess, thought that that looks like Victor Timely's hair, but no, this is just a purple turban. But I just want to remind you all that the Loki finale does not explicitly show what happened to Victor Timely. But I did go into this in a video, and I pointed out that he is most likely continuing to work at this new version of the TVA alongside Ouroboros at that same desk, because Obi's desk notice is way better organized, and it looks like someone else is sharing the workspace, and Victor and Obi are co-credited on that handbook. But the fact that the TVA has technicians in white lab coats at all is worth noting, because this is like a new position that we saw at the end of Loki, and I think it was just meant to show that this new era of the TVA is focused on gently nurturing the tree of time, like gardeners or people working in a greenhouse, and that it's not their job to violently prune branches like lumberjacks. Hey, lumberjacks are cool. I don't mean to knock lumberjacks. Now, in my breakdown video, I talked about the sticker in Wade's locker with the magpie on the soccer ball, and I talked about Ryan Reynolds co-owning the Wrexham football club with Rob McElhinney, but a lot of you have reached out to me after that, letting me know that this logo is actually from the Knotts County football club, which is a rival to Wrexham, who in season two of the Welcome to Wrexham FX docuseries was competing with Wrexham at the top of their league for the promotion spot. And Brian Reynolds has big respect for the Knotts County Club, and this is a shout out to them. Okay, next, on the video wall, I pointed out Deadpool's Emmy acceptance speech for that win from Welcome to Wrexham, but I did mention that when we see the shots of Steve Rogers, Wade is saluting. I thought it was obvious, but you know, I guess because I did not say it out loud, you were all like, you missed it, idiot. But I'm talking about it here because I think for Wade to have this respect for Steve Rogers, it's just gonna make it really fun if Chris Evans shows up in this movie playing Johnny Storm from the 2005, 2007 Fantastic Four movies. And we should remember that Chris Evans made a cameo in Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy's previous movie, Free Guy, when Reynolds held up the Captain America shield. What the shit? So when some of you guys make fun of me for theorizing that Taylor Swift could show up in this movie, I'm kind of like, dudes, Taylor is good friends with Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively. They go to each other's parties. Ryan Reynolds got Brad Pitt to cameo in Deadpool 2, and putting Brad Pitt in your movie ain't easy, especially from the studio level, because it makes the movie a risk to distribute in China, because the Chinese film board won't distribute Brad Pitt movies after seven years in Tibet. That's facts. Look it up, folks. So I'm just saying crazier cameos have happened in Ryan Reynolds movies than Taylor Swift. She wants to win an Oscar for Best Original Song. This is her best pathway to do it. Okay, the next detail. This shot of Wade sitting behind these teeth. This is actually Hulk's bed from Sakaar in Thor Ragnarok, in which the frame of the bed was a giant jawbone. Okay, next, the shot of Wolverine patch that I pointed out in the high-end nightclub poker game, where I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Gambit on the other side of him, Taylor Kitsch or Channing Tatum. But this version of patch, I think is a variant from the Hugh Jackman Wolverine because he has a much slimmer build and a much shorter torso than Hugh Jackman does because Hugh Jackman's a tall guy. So I think Ryan Reynolds is going to pull a John Krasinski Reed Richards and cast Patch as an actor often fan cast as a possible new Wolverine. And the two actors everyone has been like, make them Wolverine, have been Daniel Radcliffe and Taron Edgerton. In this case, I'm going to go with Edgerton because he has much more pronounced shoulders than Daniel Radcliffe does. Daniel Radcliffe is like a little elf. He's such a little tiny man. And I don't know, it just kind of seems like Taron Edgerton just man spreads more than Daniel Radcliffe does. And from the Matthew Von Kingsman films, Taron Edgerton just has a knack for playing suave, stylistic characters who seem to be cut from the cloth of 007. Okay, next, the snowy forest that I speculated could be part of the forest of Sokovia, where the Avengers assaulted Strucker's castle at the beginning of Age of Ultron. But look at this fallen tree in the overturned truck. I might've gotten this wrong, folks. This might actually be the woods near the Canadian border where Wolverine dies in the movie Logan. That tree could be the exact tree where X-24 impaled him. Like, notice how Deadpool fights TVA Minutemen in the same area and later behind the tree, he holds up his hand and says, wait, I think this could be the site of Logan's death. Now in their announcement video back in September, 2022, Ryan Reynolds promised that this movie would not touch Logan's death in the 2017 movie. But maybe the joke here is that it wouldn't successfully retcon Wolverine's death. That Wade will initially try to retcon it to save Wolverine, but then just find himself cosmically unable to. And then at that point, he would just wish to preserve the sanctity of the death and then would unleash rage on these TVA Minutemen for desecrating the sacred burial site. Also, since this is on the border of Canada, maybe Ryan Reynolds is just going to consider this hollowed ground for that reason alone. Now, there's actually a lot that's easy to miss in the void. I discussed the specific way this 20th Century Fox logo is buried to obscure the word Fox, but leave the X visible as a nod to the delayed fade to black on the letter X throughout the X-Men movies. But then there's this other chunk that Deadpool lands on, and I just realized it's kind of like a seesaw, and this is what causes the bullet magazine to fling up for him to do this reloading move. Then, as the camera turns to the right on Deadpool, in the ruins of the background, I believe that is Toronto's CN Tower. Just another Canada reference there. And just past that is a tan-colored conical thatched roof that I believe might be one of the rondevels that topped all the skyscrapers of the Golden City in Wakanda in the Black Panther movies. In the shot where the TBA agent gets swept up by Elioth, on the left side of frame are a few motorcycles. One of them has a holster for a rifle. I think this may be a version of Captain America's motorcycle from World War II and Captain America the First Avenger. The car that Deadpool 
Rumble smashes through the back. Windshield of has a coexist non-denominational religious bumper sticker on the back. The shot of that hooded and masked scavenger that seems to be part of Pyro's crew with that crane operated weapon has a few details in this shot. I pointed out the crashed helicarrier already, but this mechanical arm is actually the Canadarm that was supplied from Canada for the space shuttle Columbia. You can actually see Canada written on it with the Canadian flag. In the background of this shot, there is the curved scaled corpse of a Chitauri Leviathan. And then further back in the distance, I think my favorite of all these is the ruins of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge, which is still broken from after Magneto tore it from its foundation and moved it to Alcatraz in 2006 X-Men The Last Stand, a shot that I broke down in our breakdown of that film. It was, at the time, one of the most expensive shots in film history, taking up a sixth of that film's budget, and also, logically, completely unnecessary when they rewrote the movie so that Alcatraz would not be a mutant prison anymore. Magneto just moved the bridge to give the Brotherhood, I guess, a path from Marin County to the island, when he could have just summoned a few fairies for them. Still, it looked amazing and was totally worth it. There's a quick close-up of some Deadpool figure firing Uzis, but these gloves are different than our Deadpool's gloves. So now we're wondering if this might actually be Lady Deadpool with Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively, rumored to appear in the role. The shot of Deadpool in this bloody car on the seats and upholstery are various spots with triple claw marks. So these obviously were left by Wolverine. But you'll also notice that Deadpool in the shot has some dark bloody wounds on his chest, on his left side, and ribs right side with triple stab marks from Wolverine's claws. So this would be after his run-in with Logan in the final shot of the trailer. Now the shot of Aaron Stanford Pyro in a faded red and mustard yellow outfit with red Round red eyepieces, this is Pyro's appearance in the Ultimate Comics. So they found a way to make him comic accurate, and he looks great. The final trailer shot that includes the Pingo Doce bottle and the Secret Wars number 5 comic book, I spent a lot of time talking about the shadow and how Ryan Reynolds cranes his neck forward to make his shadow a bit taller than Hugh Jackman's shadow and a bit of one-upmanship. But Logan, by Sneak Dean, forms the shape of the letter W for Wolverine, for Wade, and an upside down M for Mephisto. <laughs> And one final detail, because at Moondog's Landing on Twitter keeps nagging me about this, on the final Deadpool and Wolverine logo, this guy says that there's a hidden Mickey on the A, and yes, there are three small circles there. But look, I don't know. Some folks just love to point to any three adjacent circles and say that they are hidden Mickeys. I don't know that the three sons of Xandar in the final shot of Guardians of the Galaxy is an intentional hidden Mickey by James Gunn. But in this case, I will allow it, because this trailer opened with Deadpool making a joke about pegging in a Disney movie. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo but it is for Disney. And I just think that Ryan Riddles loves the fact that he's getting away with all this violence and his raunchy humor under the Disney banner. And a reminder that New Rock Stars is breaking down all of the X-Men and Deadpool movies in our X-Men Snick Snick rewatch. So subscribe to New Rock Stars and our sister channels, The Break Room and The Deep Dive. I'm Eric Voss. Thanks for watching. Bye.